Right, so we're going to make the stop work now, which is just the snail part, but I'm going to make it out of gauge plates. So we'll start by just putting a bit of layout fluid, in this case the blue die cam, and we'll let that dry, and then we can begin laying out the part. Right, so let's lay out the uh, stop work. What a diameter of 19.5, so... Right then, so got the layout, roughly speaking. First thing we're going to do is poke a 8mm hole through the middle. Yes, I know, milling tool, Jacob's chuck, but we're only doing a light cut. Uh, we're not actually doing any milling that's going to be going side to side that's going to potentially drag the cutter out. So I'm prepared to take the risk. Using a milling cutter just as a way of boring the hole to a reasonably close fit uh, without having to sacrifice any reamers. Also, this setup doesn't allow for a reamer uh, to go all the way through the part, so H plate's pretty hard stuff, so a carbide milling cutter is a pretty good way of just boring an accurate an accurate-ish hole. So reasonable, reasonably nice fit actually that, so good start, you can see what we're trying to achieve here. Over to the BCA jig borer. Right, so over at the BCA, off camera I've just turned up this little centering plug which goes in the middle of the boring table here, the rotary table rather, and then that enables us to drop our part on centered up. Uh, now I just need to decide where my start stop is going to be. Let's bring the table up to zero. So what we'll do is we'll just clamp this down with a couple of uh, uh, these little clamps. Now I need to begin the hunt for the 10mm spanner. <laughs> ha! Got him! There we go. Knit those up. Right, so now we'll bring the head down. Just roughly. And then we can Take it out so that it's going to cut outside of the marked lines, just to give us a starting point cut. And we'll put some gloop on there.
and we can just tentatively uh, take a cut and see how near the mark we are. I don't want to cut all the way round because we're going to start snailing out. Right, so now we've got to the point where the part is barely held on. The the material here is getting really really thin, but it's still sufficiently holding it together. So I'm just going to now raise the cutter back out again and I'm going to uh, just rough out the, uh, the rest of the cuts freehand. Begin by just roughing out the, uh, the actual stock part of the uh, of the part. Okay, the part is roughed out. Take the uh, centering plug back out now, and uh, it's quite a thin amount of metal left, sort of tabbing it together. So not too difficult to just. break it away but you need to be very careful because these are you know, razor sharp. There we go so we've essentially got the part there and we can uh, file off the flashing and bring it down to size. So now what I'm doing is just uh, checking the location of the stopwork here. I've got to make sure it's uh, in the right orientation before I drill the holes for the screws. So I'm just winding the chain onto the fusee, just manually, and you can see it's winding off the barrel here. And you always want to keep a bit of chain on the barrel. You don't want it to run all the way off. Okay, we're up to the start point here. So we can see here numbers of full rotations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two full rotations and it's just slightly over 22 at the moment so if we turn it on a little bit further that's about 22 and a half at that position you can see also that the with it set in that in that situation there's still about 
a third of the barrel with chain on. I wouldn't ever want to get less than that. So I'm happy with that positioning. So we'll just make sure that the stop work is butted up like that. And then what I'm going to do is just put a pen mark so that when I take it apart in a minute, I can drill through the holes and screw the stop work to the front of the fusee. So here's the fusee back out of the clock. There's the mark that we've just made. And I've already drilled these holes to the tapping size. So I can use these as drilling guides now and drill through into the, into the brass of the fusee. And then I can tap the holes in the fusee. Then I can drill these for clearance for 10 BA and countersink them and then fit two screws. Right, so 1.4 millimeters is tapping size for 10 BA. So we'll just line up with the hole and then give it a bit of downward pressure. So here's the completed part. You can see it fitted to the clock here and it's just off the uh, full wind position now. When it's fully wound it comes in and it hits the stop iron there that's being pushed into its path by the fusey chain. So you can see the uh, operation quite clearly. And I'm quite pleased with that repair. I'm also pleased with the fusey repair as it's mounted to the clock. It looks very good and uh, it's functioning very well so all told a successful job thanks for watching i'll see you on the next video